Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss what is Ethernet. So Ethernet is a group of technologies and products which are commonly used to establish a local area network. And the original version of Ethernet was designed by Robert Metcalf and his colleagues in 1973 when they were working at Xerox and it was first standardized by a uh, by IEEE 9, in 1983 as 802.2 and 802.3. And the original version of Ethernet used coaxial cable to connect the nodes. So the nodes were uh, connected with the help of this coaxial cable. And coaxial cable offered the data rate from 10 megabits per second to 100 megabits per second. And this is how the coaxial cable looks like. After coaxial cable, a more faster cable was introduced that is called UTP or unshielded twisted pair and it offered data rates from 10 megabits per second to 10 gigabits, gigabits per second. After that, fiber optics cable was introduced and it offered 1 gigabits per second to 100 gigabits per second the reason was that in fiber optics cable, the information is converted into the light and this cable actually carries a light signal as an information. An original Ethernet shared this common medium by using a scheme. That scheme is called Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection, CSMACD. So I have a separate video to explain the CCMA, CSMACD. And let's compare, uh, let's relate Ethernet with the OSI reference model where the, the, the data link layer has been divided into two parts. The first part is called the logical link layer and the second part is called the media access uh, layer. And 802.3 part of Ethernet actually covers this media access layer and the physical layer. So media access layer and the physical layer are covered by 802.3 part of Ethernet. And this logical link layer is covered by 802.2 part of Ethernet. And these two standard together describe the function of Ethernet. So after discussing uh, briefly about Ethernet, let's move to a specific job of logical link layer and that is defined by 802.2. So the specific job of this logical link layer is that it is the interface to the upper layer. So in this case, this is the interface to the network layer. And this is interface is provided by using service access point or SAP. And this logical link layer actually receives the PDU from this network layer. And it also adds some information in that to identify that which network protocol is going to use the, this layer. Maybe, uh, maybe TCP IP, maybe IPX, SPX. So this also adds information about the layer above, which is using the services of the layers below that. And it can offer three types of services. Unacknowledged connection, connection layer service is the mandatory service out of those three services. And LLC, or the logical link control, is implemented in software. Like we have a network interface card in our computers which is used to connect the computers and we install the drivers for that and those drivers actually perform the job of logical link layer and this LLC's implementation is independent of the physical equipment which are just below that. So I have shown the figure of this uh, network interface card as well. And then let's move to the job of media access layer are the lower layer of data link layer. So the upper layer was the LLC and the lower layer is media access layer. And 
this media access layer performs two jobs. One is data encapsulation and second one is MAC, or the media access control. Uh, so the first data encapsulation, what it does, it receives uh, the packet from the network layer and it adds header and trailer to that IP packet. And in this header, we have the following information. So we have the frame delimiting. It frame delimiting is uh, is a uh, is a part of the frame which identifies the start. So it identifies the start of the frame. So from where the frame is started and where the frame is going to end. So frame delimiting provides this function. And in addition to that, it also provides the function of synchronization that both the sender and receiver should be synchronized to send the information to each other. And this header part also has the addressing. So each NIC card, which is just installed in the computer, each NIC card has an address that is called the physical address or the MAC address for that computer. And so in this header, we have the MAC address or the physical address of the node where you want to send the information. Now, in addition to that, in the trailer, we also have a mechanism to detect the errors. For example, if the if the data is transmitted from one point to another, it may there may be the situation that there are some of the errors, and this mechanism called CRC check is added in the trailer part of uh, the frame to identify if there were if there were errors during the transmission. And after discussing the data encapsulation, we can also discuss the role of media access control, the MEC part of this media access layer. So the job of MEC is to provide the placement and removal of the frames for, of the media. For example, we have this media we have any media, for example, coaxial cable or UTP. So how to place the frames onto that media and how to how to remove the frames dot media. So this is the first job of the MAC uh, layer. And the second job is to control the access of the media. It means a media is there, but at one time, who is allowed to use that media by using the same scheme that is CSNACD. So this is the a responsibility of MAC layer to control the access of the media, which is being used by different uh, nodes. And then the job of MAC layer is also to initiate the transmission and uh, it also recovers if there are some of errors, uh, if there are some of the collisions. So it, it actually initiates the transmission and it also, uh, it also uh, recovers the transmission in terms of in the in, in case of collision. Now, A two two point three, covering the physical layer and the media access layer, defines the electrical and optical characteristics of the link, and depending on this medium, so whatever medium we are using, maybe sometimes we are using coaxial cable like this. Sometimes using maybe using a UTP. Sometimes you are using optical fiber. So which media is actually being used to carry the signals from one point to another? Depending on the characteristics of the media, various Ethernet types have been defined. For example, in this table, this is the first Ethernet type that is 10, 10 base 5. This media type actually uses the coaxial cable for the transmission and that coaxial, coaxial cable provides a bandwidth of 10 megabits per second and the maximum distance between the nodes can be 500 meters. And for maybe for in this case 1000 base DX, it, this uh, type of Ethernet uses uh, UTP uh, CAT5, so this is the category of UTP and it offers a bandwidth of one gigabits per second and the maximum distance covered by this cable, by this UTP is 100 meters. In this, in the same way, these two Ethernet types use 
optical fiber one is multi mode and this is sorry this is the mono mode this is mono mode so in multi mode fiber the maximum distance is 300 and the bandwidth is, is bandwidth is 10 gigabits per second but in mono board you can see even though the bandwidth is same but the distance covered is higher in in now in multi mode actually in the same cable multiple users are using the same cable but in in, in mono mode only one the transmitter and the receiver i hope you guys got some idea from my this video and see you next thank you